we doing, folks? Your host, Matt, here, and after quite a long hiatus, we want to welcome you back to the Sickle Slapjaw. I don't know. It could be two, three, four, seven years since we've had an episode, <laughs> but we're back. I'm here with my lead analyst, most winningest uh, general manager slash owner, uh, commissioner. He's a jack of all trades. We're here with Troy. <laughs> Sickle Slapshot, first episode of the 2019-20 season. It's great to have you on hey, board. It's great to be here, man. The pleasure is always mine. Everybody, we're excited for your comments. I'm sure you're going to make fun of us. We understand. <laughs> we don't care. So we are here to talk about the new season. Of course, we're coming off the 2018-19 season that saw a path win the title for the fourth year in a row. It was for the first time owner Blaze Path's turn to lift, the, I don't know what the heck, does our trophy have a name? Uh, I think it does, but I forget. I don't know. It. Whatever the championship trophy is, we don't care. He won. Good for him. Um, so he lifted the SC Sickle Cup. Is it like the Sickle Cup Probably. or something like that? Works for me. He lifted it. Whatever. He won. Good for him. Nobody cares anymore. <laughs> um, so Blaze, Malkin's Mouthful, won the title. Fourth path in a row, like we said, Troy with two titles. I, of course, had the inaugural title. Not a big deal. And Damien with a title as well. So... Blaze looking to defend, but this season is going to be very, very interesting, and we want to provide our analysis to let you know how much your team suck coming into this season. So we're going to analyze. First off, to start, you know, everybody keeps 15 keepers. We had some discussion about potentially modifying that down the road, but as it stands now, league bylaws still 15 keepers, and that's where the teams can really, you know, that's where we try and hopefully bring the teams back down to earth, make them at least kind of close. Because, you know, for the most part, everybody's top 10 or 15 players are all pretty good. But we're going to take a look and say whose teams still suck and whose teams are very good after those keepers. And to that, our lead analyst, Troy, what do you think after the keepers were released? What was that, July 31st? Mm -hmm. Who do you think was the biggest winner, biggest loser coming uh, into this yeah, season? Yeah, so, so uh, three of the teams that I liked uh, near the top I thought were Eichel Tower, Chance of Flurries, and Boozum with Balsma. I thought all had some pretty strong keepers. Uh, we'll start with Eichel Tower. Obviously, any team that, that is led by Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel, that's a deadly duo. Um, he's also but it's also led by Tyler Schultz, so they kind of cancel out. <laughs> no, uh, Eichel Tower, that's uh, Yuli. Oh, Yuli. Eh, can't <laughs> uh, he's also he'll, tra he'll trade him probably. It's <laughs> supplanting that with uh, Philip Forsberg and Jake Gensel. Uh, he obviously could use some help in goal, but his skaters are really, uh, I think, going to be a force this year. Uh, chance of flurries again. Any team led by Sid the Goat uh, is going to be, you know, up there all the time. Uh, Johnny Gaudreau, Eric Carlson, and Landis Cog also uh, on chance of flurries and boozing with Bosma last year's playoff team, the sixth seed. Um, he's got a really, really nice young core. Uh, Elias Pedersen, Dreisaitl, Besser, Aho, Rantanen, who I believe he uh, traded for a, a third-round pick a few years ago. Um, also, Mitch Marner, Krug, Thomas Shabbat. Uh, he, he's got a really, really nice core there. And, of course, David Pasternak, who I'm still scratching still my head. Still the worst draft pick ever taken. <laughs> Nobody understood it. But that's where I can use my Tyler Schultz joke. He'll kill that team. That would be terrible still. But, yeah, unbelievable team there. Uh, obviously, you can't count out. He's, he's being modest, but his team, of course, Bendy like Backstrom, you know, a team that's in the hunt, you know, was in the championship round last year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and got smacked. But he's <laughs> been in the championship round the last three years. Always, always in the mix to win it. Might even been four. Did you lose to Damien? Mm, I think the round before Might that, be round. maybe. But so it's always been a, you know, a, a team that's been one to be reckoned with. Uh, and if you take a look, we actually have here, we'll put them on the screen as well, but we've taken what Yahoo thinks are the best keepers that have been kept around. This, of course, our list of best keepers by players. So the best players that are still in the roster, you can see Eichel Tower, like Troy's already mentioned, was number one. Chance of Flurries, two. Bendit, like Backstrom, was three. And Boozing with Bosman, number four. Mix and Nash at number five for your top half of the best keepers in terms of players. Uh, really far down the list. Uh, with the unsanctioned name change, Denny's team, Walk with Elias or Loserville, uh, 133, not a great ranking there. Um, also very, very poor in the goalie ranking. He was about sixth. Uh, we have keeper players up here as well, but while we're on the keeper topic, the best keeper goalies, Bendit like Backstrom, uh, had very, very good keeper goalies, two good solid keepers. Uh, only two people kept... Three goalies. One of them was Teach Me How to Dougie, who actually had the number one ranked goalies in terms of keepers. Yep, so good. that's the one thing he does have some very, very good goalies. Uh, Bobrovsky among them. Uh, I think Bishop as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pekka Rinne, I want to say. Yep. Uh, and then Ch Chance of Flurries as well. Myself also kept three goalies and pretty happy with those. Marc Andre Fleury, of course, the team namesake. Jordan Bennington and uh, John Gibson 
uh, as well. So some good solid keepers yeah. there. And you know, I, uh, I that kind of surprises me that only a couple of teams kept three goaltenders this year, considering how important goaltenders are and how hard it can be to get your hands on a bona fide starter. And we did have w- only one team kept one goalie. That was Boozing with Bilesma, uh, whose goaltending has been a sore spot for him pretty much throughout his career here in the SCKL. Uh, but he'll try to improve on those in the draft. We'll determine whether he did or not when we talk about best teams coming out of the draft. So that's where we look keeper-wise. You can see a lot of the teams that were good, solid playoff teams last year, but it wasn't too terribly far apart in terms of keepers. You know, that's the thing. It helps lessen the playing field and makes the draft that much more important to build that depth in your team. And speaking of the draft, Troy, who do you think came out with a fantastic, uh, you know, result from our 10-round mm-hmm. draft. Yeah, you know, uh, the two teams I thought had probably the best drafts for me were probably Mix and Nashit and Chance of Flurries. Um, I really, really liked Mix and Nashit's top three picks. He went uh, Peter Mrazek, goaltender in Carolina, uh, Nikolai Ehlers, who in my opinion can end up being the steal of the draft. Uh, I personally wish I had taken him at nine over JT Miller. Uh, and then you got Darnell Nurse as Could well. Could be the bust the of the draft. Could be. I uh, got Dar- Darnell Nurse as well there. And then even later in the draft, he's, he went with a bunch of high upside guys. Uh, he's got Drew Ann, Kapanen, Butchnevich, and uh, Casey Middlestad. If, really, if just one of those guys hits and uh, plays up to his fullest potential, I think Mixon Nash could have a really, really nice draft. And to touch on, uh, again, yourself, chance of flurries, you, you, uh, like Damian had a strong top three or four picks. I think it went to Donov, um, Ekman Larson, Pareko, Andreas Janssen, who could be a really nice sleeper in Toronto. That's a skilled team if he gets a top six spot there. Um, and then I remember you took uh, Andre Kasha later in Anaheim, who I think is playing on their top line. So uh, he was another nice sleeper, in my opinion. Yeah, not, not the plug, but the hockey news, uh, fantasy guide, real real <laughs> nice there. Good, good some sleeper suggestions. <laughs> also, hopefully we can get Jetsper Brat. Hopefully that guy can pick it up. He's been uh, you know supposed to be on a New Jersey high line. That was a sleeper pick that I saw. Uh, a couple of good sleepers I want to mention as well while we just talk about the draft and we get into you know who Yahoo said had the best draft. Uh, I really like Boozer with Bosma picked uh, Texier, mm-hmm. Texier, however Columbus. you want to say it, from Columbus. He's on their first line, just scored an overtime winner for them. Should be very, very good. Should be a really good player. I think that was a great pick. Uh, a couple other ones that, you know, we'll see how they pan out. Mix and Nash it got Kasperi Kapanen, uh, who's been playing on the first line for Toronto yep. while Zach Hyman's injured. I don't think he's been doing very well, but he's at least getting that opportunity. Yep. So that's another player that, that, that could have a big role. A couple sleepers there. Uh, but as we look at what Yahoo thought who had a good draft, uh, and we'll, we'll be able to refer back here uh, because, you know, as technology goes, we can look at who did what here in the draft. Uh, Yahoo said people that had very nice drafts, uh, guys or geese, uh, you can see player-wise, 174.9 overall Yahoo ranking, got the likes of, I think, Oshi, who was 98th overall yeah. or something like that, I want to say. He took in maybe the first round. Yep. So, I mean, that's going to, of course, boost that rating up and help. But a very solid, pretty much everybody in the mid to late 100s for his pick. So he did a nice job there, did the goose. Also, you can see uh, McDavid versus Goliath trying to climb out of sort of the cellar uh, and did a nice job with some picks there. He got Ricard Raquel from Anaheim, who was the top overall available player in the draft. Of course, you're going to take him, but he's very solid. And he also got a couple other players that were like 123, 136. Some good players there, and I can actually look and tell you who they were here in just a second. Uh, but McDavid versus Goliath got the likes of Ryan Ellis, who I think is a solid D. He took Hornfist, who's had a good start to the season. Uh, Blake Coleman, who uh, uh, I don't even want to call him a sleeper because I wanted to keep him from my <laughs> team last year. I just didn't have you know enough space on the roster. He's going to be a fantastic player. He does a lot of the peripherals and can score some goals for New Jersey. How about that goal he scored the other Unbelievable. day? Unbelievable. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look like Kovalev. Yeah. Remember that Kovalev yeah, video absolutely. where he's just whipping yep. shots off his backhand one hand. So Coleman was a great pick. Uh, who else did he get real early on? Boone Jenner. So some good players with good peripherals yeah. that could really help him out. So that was nice. Geyser, of course, we mentioned. We give him a little bit of a shout-out. He had Oshi, uh, Van Riemsdyk, who could be solid on a Philly team that looks very good right now. Uh, did he have another pick? Didn't have a third-round pick. But then in the fourth round, he had Shea Theodore, very good defenseman. Corey Crawford, we'll see how he does. Stastny. So a lot of guys that are a little bit older, maybe didn't go for the the sleeper-type picks, but they're guys that should be consistent and do a nice mm-hmm. job for them. So those are good uh, in terms of keeper players. You can see uh, Elias again. Tough draft, uh, we have to say. Um, flurries, uh, I want to say Troy gave me a good shout-out for the draft. I think I did better 
than what this suggests. I had one player that was ranked 643 that I picked. That'll bring kinda, the average Kind of brought the average down, so that hurt me there. Uh, I think it would have been a little bit higher up, maybe third or fourth. Um, but you can see Troy again had a nice draft, as you expect. Everybody here, that was the one thing I noticed during the drafting process. The guys, you know, other than the real deep sleepers, like the Jesper Bratz and the Texiers and guys like that, Texier, however the hell you want to say it, I'm going to get it wrong every time. But other than those guys, I don't think any guys that you would consider even mild sleepers went by the wayside because I yep. think everybody in this league does their research. Mm -hmm. Nobody's letting picks go awry. Even like Troy taking JT Miller in the first round, he probably wasn't first round value necessarily, and he may not turn out to be worth that, but he's the kind of guy that when you looked at the situation he was going to be put in, mm -hmm. he was a sleeper because he was going to be projected first line potentially for yep. Vancouver, first, round, first power play. Might not work out for him like that, or but might. that's a pick that, you know, it doesn't look bad. Even if it plays out badly, everybody does their research and yep. was looking for those it's kinds of It's a good league. It's a tough league, top to bottom. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, goalies then, the one thing that we said in the draft, goalies flew off the board very early mm -hmm. on. Everybody that didn't keep, you know, more than two goalies needed to get another goalie or two to make sure they had some starters. You can see the first round, I think it was uh, – Grubauer went, which I think is a great pick. Colorado is going to be very good, so Denny got a nice pick there. Uh, Varlamov went. I think that's a terrible pick, Carlino, <laughs> uh, just so you know. And uh, with the way the first round's been going, your goalies stink. Um, Varlamov struggled. Uh, Markstrom for Vancouver with uh, Buzin, so Schultz took him. Laner went to Yuli. Again, I don't know if that'll be a great pick with how Chicago's going to be, as well as, you know, just he's always been an inconsistent goalie. And then Mrazek, uh, which, like Troy mentioned, very good pick, we think, for Damian. Carolina is going to be very good this year. So five goalies went off in the first round, and we'll see how that you know turns out. But it, it allowed people to, to grab players if they wanted to, which I actually liked myself. Troy took Riddich right at the beginning of the next round. Yep. So goalies were flying off the board very early on. Uh, and, and you know that you know nobody's going to get a super stud goalie because, of course, they're going to be kept. But if I just look at the goalie rankings here, Loserville, Ended up actually with between the two goalies he took under 100 in average rating. So two good solid goalies Very there. Very nice. Um, who else we got? Geyser Geese had a solid pickup. Troy's two goalies not great, but decent average. He's me on a Dougie had what should be a high ranking goalie. We'll see how it does. Eichel Tower, a uh, couple of low ranking goalies not great. And Boozen with Bosma, he took three goalies, but his average rating was 260 mm. between those three goalies. So. Uh, not ideal. See how it goes. Not ideal. We'll see how it That's goes. That's why we play the season. Absolutely. So those are the teams, uh, you know, that are how they looked after each round that we kind of go through. Keepers, draft. The last thing I want to touch on, uh, which Troy can provide some analysis if he wants, I'll, I'll kind of bring it up to start off with here, is not only do the guys that you picked have the potential to make an impact, but of course we have the amateur draft and the farm teams, which are expanding over time. Guys don't have a ton of players on them right now. But some teams do have some guys that can really make an impact and already are, have been called up already. Uh, you have the likes of, we're talking for Eichel Tower. Um, he's got Thatcher Demko, mm -hmm. goalie who I think will be solid, probably better than a couple of the goalies he picked. Yeah, he could have taken that starting job Absolutely, in can, can take that at any time. He's also got Gusev, so if he turns out to be a good yep. player, they've been trying him out, I think, with Hall and Heischer yeah, they just stuck him on very that first recently. Line. So if he turns into a first-line player, that's a huge uh, addition to your lineup. Uh, McDavid versus Goliath brought Kako up already. Uh, he could, of course, be a fantastic player. Could turn out having a not a great season, but he's still going to be one to watch to make an impact this season. Uh, Geyser Geese with Jack Hughes. Yep. I mean, no doubt about it. He's yeah. going to have an impact. Hasn't done much so far, but he's going to be a player that I'd expect him to be on his roster sooner rather than later. And the guys with really deep farm teams uh, are, of course, the two guys sitting here. You know, it's a two to our own horns. Uh, before we go away from some good farm teams, uh, Boozing with Bosma does have Sam Steele from yep. Anaheim, Big who's going to be very, very good, I think. And Branstrom, mm -hmm. defenseman from Ottawa, who I think will also be very good. We'll see how much fantasy impact he plays, because I think he should be more of a scoring guy. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how much he'll contribute this season, but he could make an impact. But to toot Troy in our own horns here, you know, we're pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Troy has Quinn Hughes. Uh, should make a good impact on defense for Vancouver. Adam Fox, who I thought was a big steal in the keeper draft in the Very third round. Yep. Uh, I, I was surprised he lasted that long because, like we said, we do have some guys that do good research. I actually looked at him, but I took, uh, what's his name, Hepo Niemi mm -hmm. from Florida instead. Uh, he also has Cody Glass from uh, Vegas, who's already scored a goal, should be very good. And then uh, Dow Cole, who may make an impact as well this season. For myself, Kale McCarr. 
Saw him in the playoffs last year. He's fantastic. He's already got a couple of points for Colorado. He may be on my lineup sooner rather than later. Alex Nylander from Chicago. That trade has actually really worked in his favor. He looked like he's going nowhere with Buffalo. He goes to Chicago. He's playing with Kane and Taze right now. (laughs) Hard to beat that. They've only played one game, but he did have a goal. Mm -hmm. He looked good in the preseason. So that could be a surprise steal. I thought he was a guy that might end up be dropping off the farm team here in a year or two. He could make a huge impact. And a guy that has already been called up. Uh, he was our second rookie call-up, I think, of the year so far. Victor Olofsson mm-hmm. from Buffalo, who, same thing, he was an under-the-radar guy. He wasn't like a guy taken out of the amateur draft like we normally have in the first round. He was, I think, my second rounder this yeah. year. High score in the AHL th- uh, last year was the top scorer, I think, in the AHL. And he's on a line with Eichel, and he's on a line with Ryan yeah. Hart. He's on their first line. He's got three goals, I think, already this season. Looks like an absolute sniper, so he could be could be very solid. So. I mean, Troy, you know, you know, I'm sure you're going to talk yourself up, but you got a good-looking farm <laughs> team for this year, eh? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, Dal Cole, I think he's played some 40-some games already uh, in his career. So uh, with the, the new role this year, expanding the games played limit to 82, that'll help me out there, give me uh, some more time to look at Dal Cole because he hasn't done a whole ton so far in his career. Oh, and I can't but, believe uh, I didn't even mention Blaze has Carter Hart. Yeah, they called ca- him up caught already. Caught a hot, yep. as we like to say in Boston. Yep. Yeah, that, uh, was a, that was a pretty shrewd move by him to keep him on him, that. Great move by him, dropping yep. him. To, on the farm to team, the farm yep. team, absolutely, because he didn't meet the limit yet. You could drop him down, so that was a big, big move there. Save him a keeper. I think he's the first person that had ever met the threshold of being able to drop somebody in yeah. the off season because yep. he hadn't played as many games. Um, so, and he had been on his roster the season before. Um, so that was a great move by him. Has he called him up yet? Yeah, yeah already he on his did. roster. Yep. Yeah, so Carter Hart's up on his roster. He's going to make a big impact goaltending wise. For uh, if I look at team goaltending wise, Marcus Mouthful that ranked. Pretty near last. I think he was third to last in average goaltender ranking, and that wasn't factoring in Carter Hart because he wasn't on his roster. So you bring a guy like that into the mix, that's going to have a big, big impact. We've talked about teams from the, uh, you know, farm teams, uh, keepers, and the draft. We will get into who we think are kind of the best overall teams, both via Yahoo, and then we'll even have Troy and I sketch out kind of our top 10 ranked teams, how we think they're going to finish out potentially this season. But before we get into that, Let's talk just some some intricacies of the league, some little things you might ha- not think about. So last year, of course, like we mentioned, Malkin's Mouthful won the league. We had six teams in the playoffs, as we always do. We had uh, Chance of Flurries, Bend It Like Backstrom, uh, Boozing with Bowsman, his first ever playoff appearance was the sixth seed. Uh, we had Malkin's Mouthful, of course. I think he won the league from the five seed, maybe four seed, somewhere in there. I think I want to say the four seed. Eichel Tower was in there, and then Mix and Nash it as well. So those were teams that were in the playoffs. We had Teach Me How to Dougie, Geyser Geese narrowly missed out on the playoffs. We had uh, McDavid versus Goliath, and we had Loserville as the four, uh, walk with Elias, as he's now known, as the four teams not in the playoffs. Um, so the question I have for you, Troy, number one, give me one team that you think from those six teams that were in the playoffs, who, do you, in your opinion, is the least likely to return to the playoffs, or I should say the most likely to not return to the playoffs, and who is the most likely to make it to the playoffs from those four teams that were on the cusp last season? Uh, yeah, so for the team that I think uh, if there's going to be one that misses, i, I got to talk a little bit of uh, crap here to my rival. It's got to be Mix and Nash it, I think. You know, he's got a, a really nice top of the lineup there. He's got Kane, uh, Tavares. He's got um, Braden Point. Duchesne's also a pretty nice player. Uh, but I think his goalies are pretty suspect. You know, Matt Murray hasn't been quite the guy maybe we expected when he seceded Flurry. Uh, Carey Price struggled last year. Mrazek and Corbisalo have question marks, definitely. Um, he's also, I don't think he's got a ton of depth in that lineup. Um, like we talked about before, he, he had some nice uh, draft picks at the top, um, and he's got a lot of high upside guys that he took later. If one of them hits, who knows? But I think uh, overall, i got to say Mix and Nash, I think trending down. Yeah, a lot of question marks on that roster I'm looking at right now. You, of course, he's got the Tavares, the Canes, guys like that. A lot of question marks, though, like we mentioned, middle stat. He stunk last year. He's an upside guy. Might not put it together. Uh, Duchesne, who knows what he's going to do in Nashville. You know, he's mm-hmm. very inconsistent player. Palat, Jonathan Drouin, again, very inconsistent. Uh, Tom Wilson, who knows when might be the year he goes back to being a fourth-line plug. Kapanen hasn't done much. Buchnevich. Uh And then he's got a lot of older guys on defense, so that's a question mark of what they'll do. Yandel, Dowdy, uh, John Carlson, etc. 
So, like Troy mentioned, question marks. Mrazek, I think, and Corposalo are the two keys mm -hmm. to this team. You know, they're they're part of a, a, a goaltending quartet that has four categories important to them. Murray and Price, like we mentioned, have not been stellar like they were the year he won the championship. Yep. But you know what you're going to get from them. They're not going to be terrible. They yeah. may not be exceptional because the, the Penguins and the Canadians both look pretty average this season. If Carolina's very good again, Mrazic could end up with very good statistics. Mm -hmm. But Corpusalo could drag that down conversely on a Columbus team that's projected to be one of the worst in the league. He could also straight up lose that job to Merzelkins. Exactly. So it could be one of those things where you know you don't have that fourth goalie, so that runs you the risk of not having a ton of wins or shutouts. Also, you know he, he could save his save percentage. So it, yeah. it's a big question mark, I think, is what we'll have to say. So who do you think of the four teams that didn't make the playoffs – who might get in? Uh, yeah, I think you got to go with Teach Me How to Dougie. Uh, he's been a playoff mainstay since we started the league. Uh, last year, I believe, was the first one that he missed it. Um, he's got a solid team. He's got really great goaltending out there. Bobrovsky, Rene, Bishop, like we talked about before. Except for this week. <laughs> um, I, he's, he's got a pretty... Uh, he's got a deep team, I think, although I would say he's definitely got some work to do because, as we talked about before, this is a really tough, deep league, <clears throat> top to bottom. I think all 10 teams have a chance to make the playoffs this year. But if i got to pick one guy to get back in, it would be Teach Me How to Dougie. I like his team. Uh, I agree with you there. I think he's got the depth for sure to be a playoff team. I look at every player on his team. I think that's a player that I would have taken on my team for the most part. He doesn't have a ton of stars, right. I will say. I mean, he's got the Marshawn. Marshawn put up a ton of points last year. He mm -hmm. gets a lot of peripherals. I'd say that's probably his one star. But other than that, like Stamkos, he had a lot of points, but you know, we'll yeah. see how he goes inconsistent. Uh, those are probably his top two guys. Beyond that, he doesn't have a ton of out-and-out -out superstars. Uh, and that's something I'll actually bring up here in a little bit. I actually kind of compiled together a couple interesting stats here. Uh, for you guys to take note of. When I looked at keepers that people had kept last year, something very, very interesting uh, was I had, not to toot my own horn, uh, toot my own team's horn, but just interesting here in terms of keepers, I had eight keepers in the top 36 players on Yahoo. I don't think there was anybody that had, I want to say Teach Me How Dougie actually I think had five because they had three goalies in there, which was very impressive. But, like booze with Bo or bend it like Backstrom, very very close. You had six uh, or s seven guys in the top thirty-eight, so very close Solid. in terms of depth there. Um, so it was very good there, and you actually had eight in the top forty-two, so you were the closest as far as that. So you, that's where you can see the two teams with the high-level talent, which is mm -hmm. maybe the kind that can push you to the top. But depth is so key in this league. Everybody's gonna have some very good players, so that's where you see the depth coming. I just thought that was an interesting stat when you looked at keeper players. Uh, Chance of Flurries had seven guys in the top 36. Uh, another guy that had a lot of good keepers uh, was interesting was Eichel Tower. He only had three keepers in the top 35, but he had 11 keepers in the top 77. So that's depth. where the depth is going to come into play. Very, very nice in terms of his team there. Conversely, I think I had... I want to say I also had 11, but then it dropped off significantly from there. I had a couple guys 140, 150, 160. Mm -hmm. He didn't have anybody lower than 129, and he only had one guy lower than 113. So a lot of depth on that team, I think, to speak speak well of him. Uh, like we said, he didn't have a great draft, but keeper-wise, very, very good team there. Another team that had a lot of good keepers depth-wise, Malkin's Mouthful actually had eight or nine guys in the top 60 as well. So, so just to speak to some stuff there that was just interesting I found when going through teams. Also... Uh, not you know we don't like to talk up Schultz very much, but <laughs> boozing with Bosma, ten keepers in the top ninety. Uh, Geyser Geese also ten keepers in the top or twelve keepers excuse me in the top ninety eight. Same thing with him. Not a lot of superstars. He had he has three guys in the top fourteen. From there it was a lot of guys in the eighties and nineties, mm -hmm. but still a solid, yeah. very solid team. Deep league, really is. Um, so we talked about who's most likely to to make it, who's most likely to miss it. Um, of the teams who've not won the league, so of course that limits out uh, Mix and Nash it, Malkin's Mouthful, uh, Bend it like Backstrom, and Chance of Flurries. Of the other six teams, of course we know it's a tough league to break into to win. Who do you think of the teams that have not won it yet could be the first team to win it? Yeah, you know, as much as it kills me to say it, I really die inside. Um, 
But I gotta say, I think Boozin with Bosma has got a really. Oh, I, I man. just I love the young core he's got. The guys we went over before: Pedersen, Drysital, Besser, Aho, Rantanen, Krug, Marner, Pasternak. He's he's absolutely stacked. Um, I think the one thing he's got to do is shore up that goaltending, which I don't think he'll argue. Um, but I think the the overall age and the depth of that team is young enough. He's got enough young studs that I think in the next maybe two years, maybe, uh, if he puts together, he grabs a couple of nice goaltenders, maybe makes a move or something, really shore up that goaltending. I think Boozman with Bosma has got a really, really good chance. That's the biggest thing, like you mentioned. He's got to either surf the waiver wire, make sure that when the likes of a Bennington comes up, he's able to snag him before anybody else does. Otherwise, he's going to maybe have to offload one of those assets yeah. to try and get a good goalie. Because that's, you know, it's a big part. It's 40% of the league yep. statistics-wise. Um, so it's imperative that you have those. But like you mentioned, those keepers that he has, he was fourth in skaters. We already mentioned his goalie stink. But in terms of skaters, fourth in skaters as far as overall ranking via Yahoo. And they're all, like, under 23 yep. on his team. Yeah. So I, I could imagine he keeps all of those guys for the next couple of years. Two years when we do this analysis again, he might be number one. Yeah, in terms of player me. ranking. Yep. I mean, they're just fantastic. So a lot of good players there. I think I'd have to agree with that. I think another guy that's shown that, you know, to break into the upper echelon, and he did this especially in his first year that he joined, Eichel Tower. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's another guy that he makes a lot of aggressive moves. Sometimes it doesn't pay off for him. He didn't have his best season last year, I don't think, uh, and went out early in the playoffs. But he's the kind of guy that he does make some trades here and there, does like to shake things up. And so if – a couple of those hit in the direction that he wants. He's another guy I think could, you know, have the opportunity to get in the playoffs and make a run uh, with with the core that he has and the moves that he'll he'll make on occasion. Because you have the likes of, you know, Malkin's mouthful. All credit to him. Uh, doesn't make a ton of moves, so he just had a solid team last year that led him to the championship. Chance of flurries, we know, doesn't make a ton of moves. Only had a couple of trades, and one of the ones he made was ranting in for like a third round bet pick. <laughs> so he probably shouldn't trade any more. Um, but you know. The guys that make more moves have the opportunity to, to to make up for a team that maybe doesn't have a great draft. So that's that's something I think we could see out of him. Um, and so finally, um, the thing we're going to go through and do here, we're going to take a, a quick commercial break so we can clear off the whiteboard. But we're going to talk about how we think the teams are going to shake out. We're going to rank our teams from 10 to 1. And we're also going to talk about who we think could win the league if our teams don't win. <laughs> or... I should say, Troy will say who he thinks will win if his team doesn't win. He's going to say me. I'm going to say <laughs> he'll win if my team we'll see, we'll see how that plans out. Uh, but we'll be right back. Here are your keys, Mr. Armstrong. Right on. Colby, what are you doing here? I'm here to pick up my new BMW. a and really took good care of me because of, you know, who I am. You? Who are you? I thought they only took care of superstars like me. Hey, guys. They treat everybody like a superstar. That's why I have one of each. Gina, take a jack. a and Motor Sales, serving Pittsburgh for 60 years. All right, so we welcome you back, and we're going to get right into the meat and potatoes of things. Troy and I, we're going to go through and do our power rankings of the top 10 teams in the league. Before we do that, we'll tell you here, in the overall rankings, ranked by Yahoo, the top 10 teams in the league came as thus. Like Troy mentioned, his team to potentially miss the playoffs. Mix and Nash it came in at the bottom. The way we did these rankings as well, 0.6 times the total value of all the players on your team plus 0.4 times the total value of all the goaltenders on your team because of the fact that goalies are 40% of the stats, players are 60% of the stats. So with that in mind, Mix and Nash it was bottom of the league, 174.7. A couple of weak goalies owed to that. Uh, Boozing with Bausma was ninth. Just barely ahead of that. Same thing, a couple of weak goalies, I think, was what kind of threw that ranking down because we mentioned how good his players are. Uh, Loserville, or Walk with Elias, eighth. Reigning champion, Malkin's Mouthful, was in seventh. Uh, McDavid versus Goliath, sixth. Eichel Tower, fifth. Bend It Like Backstrom was fourth. And then here's where some shakeups came in. Like we mentioned, the, the solid drafts in terms of Yahoo rankings, if players play up to their Yahoo rankings. Teach Me How to Dougie, coming in in third. Guys or Geese, actually second overall in terms of average Yahoo cumulative ranking. And Chance of Flurries comes in first in terms of cumulative Yahoo ranking. But that all means jack all at the end of the season. That's just where things shape up here at the start. So we'll turn it over to Troy and let him go through who he predicts his top 10 teams to be 
this season as he power ranks them here at the start. All right, so uh, I think going from bottom to top here, I think uh, number 10, Walk with Elias. Uh, I think he's got a, a, a solid young core. He's got Lindholm, Heischer, Connor, Kachuk, Bertuzzi. Got a couple of nice guys there. Uh, but I think he's still maybe a year or two away from making the playoffs. But it wouldn't surprise me in the least if he did. Uh, moving up to nine. I've got McDavid at nine. Um, he made a really nice trade last year to get Taylor Hall. Really bring some, some superstar power to his team. Um, and then he's got guys like Patrick Laine, Tuka Rask, uh, Mika Zibanejad's off to an incredible start this year. Another guy really wouldn't surprise me to see him shoot up to 5-6. Um, coming in at 8, I've got Teach Me How to Dougie. Um, I, he's, got, he's got some strong goaltending, but the skater categories I think he's going to struggle a little bit with. Um, overall depth not bad but uh, it wouldn't shock me if he missed the playoffs again this year but like I said before it wouldn't shock me if he made it um, coming in seven here we got geyser geese a strong team led by Nathan McKinnon uh, who I really wish I had now instead of Claude Giroux um, <laughs> solid team he's been on the verge of the playoffs the last two years um, so look for him to, to move up this year at six I think Mixon Nash should come in at six, right at the, uh, the cusp of a playoff spot. Like we discussed before, he's, he's not got a ton of depth or goaltending, but I think he's got enough players. Um, he's gonna, I think he's going to be there at the end of the year in the playoffs. Five. I think Eichel Tower at five. Again, a team led by uh, McDavid and Eichel. It can never really go wrong. My number four team. My overall dark horse for the year, like I said, I really like the young core he's got going there. Um, I think if this isn't his year, maybe look for Boozin with Bosmo to win a title or at least get to the title game in the next two years. I think Chance of Flurries 3. Uh, any team led by Sid's always going to be in it at the end of the year. And I think when it comes down to it, the top two teams are going to be the same top two teams as last year. Uh, I really like Malkin's mouthful's depth. Uh, despite the Malkin injury and despite Dustin Bufflin not knowing what the hell he wants to do with his career, I think the rest of his team uh, is really, really solid. He's got some good goalies, some good skaters. And uh, I think my team is overall top to bottom pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with it overall. So uh, I think uh, we got a good path brawl coming again at the end of the year. All right, so basically... Like we mentioned, we're, we were going to talk about who wins the league, who's around. Troy thinks he's going to win, of course. <laughs> uh, and then also, if he doesn't win, he thinks Blaze is going to win. So we'll, we'll, we'll say it works that way. Now, when I rank these out again, I see Walk with Elias as 10. Nothing against him, like Troy mentioned. Very good core, uh, some good young guys uh, that could make an impact. But when you look at that team, uh, the goalies, not great. Uh, very inconsistent, at least. Um, that's a real big thing. Quick is going to struggle potentially. Dubnik, who knows what Minnesota is going to be, uh, and his players. He's got a mix of young guys and then some real old guys. Uh, James Neal's been off to a very hot start, but who knows if he can keep that up? So you know, a lot of question marks as far as that's concerned. I think in the nine spot again, same thing. He's making a lot of improvements. I think this is a team that it wouldn't shock me if he made the playoffs, but I don't think he has the team that's ready for it just yet. A lot of good top-end talent. I really like the likes of Dylan Larkin. I think Sam Reinhardt's going to have a big year. Hall, Line, Raquel, like we already mentioned. Those are some guys that have a lot of talent. His D's solid also. He's got Kako. Zabinajad, I think, is going to have a big year playing with Panarin. Very good team there. Don't know what his goalies are going to do. He's got both the Edmonton goalies. He's got UC Saros, who's a backup, and then Rask, who we know will be very good. But that's just going to be tough to try and win you four categories week in and week out. I think that could be the – and I think gold tank's going to be uh, the big theme as I go through the teams here. Next, I want to say, again, he's a team that's on the cusp, but the Geese, okay? Geese, very good team. I love his top-end players. I love uh, the likes of McKinnon. I like Kuznetsov. I like, uh, who else has he got here? Atkinson, Austin Matthews, of course. The top level is very good. Trocek even, Panarin. I think his offense is great. Um, D is solid. Uh, I think they're all very good players. 
His depth, though, is a big question mark, I think. Stastny, you don't know what you're going to get from him. Kevin Hayes, Tatar, guys like that. Van Riemsdyk, a lot of inconsistency. And then same thing, goalies. Holtby has looked very mortal. I saw a stat that said his save percentage the last two years was like 9.05. Yikes. Not very good there. Hellebuck for Winnipeg, if they have all their D gone, that could be a tough year for Winnipeg. And Crawford as well. He, A, might not even be the starter, depending on what happens with Laner. And Chicago, they weren't a playoff team last year. They may not be again this year, so it could be a tough run for those goalies. So I think that's really going to hurt him in that regard. Uh, when I go to the number seven team here, I'm actually going to say... Mixon Nash it. Uh, he's having a tough week here to open the season, number one. And I think same thing. Uh, he's got a tough run of it. We know what two of his goalies will be. We don't know what two of his other goalies are going to do. And really, I think I touched on this when we were talking about the teams earlier on. I, I, his forwards are way too inconsistent. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of guys that you know are going to put seasons together. Tavares, of course, you expect good things out of him. Pavelski, you would think he'll have a good year. Um, Arvidsson scores a lot of goals. Ehlers could be very good. We don't even know what Kessel's going to do. Yeah. Right? Kane's, of course, good, but he has a lot of guys points out still. That's a big guy in his roster. He's going to be missing for a chunk here, and we know that our season, you know, if point comes back for the playoffs, who cares? He needs him the entirety of the regular season. So a lot of stuff there forwards-wise. I think his goalie's are okay, but his forwards, I think, are going to be the big question mark for his team. Uh, six, then, I think I could say, teach me how to Dougie. Troy already hit the nail on the head. A good team, very solid team. Same thing. He's got a lot of good players, a lot of depth. His goalie should be very good. Yeah. They're having a very bad week. Thanks for that, Anth. I appreciate that this week because they are really terrible. Um, but he has fantastic goalies. That should be three or four goalie wins every week, to be honest, if they play to their potential. And he's got very good players. A lot of young guys uh, on defense, so we'll see how they do. But his forwards, while not having a ton of superstars, are pretty solid. So I see him as sixth. I think then fifth. But this is a guy that I mentioned. He's got a ton of depth. So he could end up having a big season. Um, is the Eichel Tower. Jack Eichel, O'Reilly. Um, same thing Logan mentioned. Not a ton of superstars. Uh, on that roster, but very, very solid. Other than McDavid, of right. course. We're not going to leave him out. Uh, his D's very good. Uh, Giordano, Hedman. I love the Konechny pick in the draft. Yeah. I really, I think that could be one of the biggest steals of the draft. I wanted to keep uh, him. Really Couldn't wanted fit. to grab him. Uh, he was a great pick there. Uh, Gensel, of course, if he plays with Sid all year, he should put up 35-40. His goalies are just a big question mark, but he does have Lundqvist. Laner was good last year. Buffalo's looked very good. I think that's what helps him there. His Hutton's looked good so far. And Grice is on a team that shouldn't give up a lot of goals, at least. So even if he doesn't have a ton of wins, his GAA shouldn't be bad. Yep. Should still get some shutouts and things like that. So I think that boosts him up here. Um, number four, and I'm actually, you know, I might have even dropped him a little bit if it weren't for the fact that it's a pretty similar team to what won the title last year, is Malkin's Mouthful. I think Malkin's Mouthful is very, very good. But same thing with a lot of these teams, the goalies. Yep. Big, big question mark. Halak is going to put up great stats, but he's a backup. Carter Hart, he's played like 25 games in his career. He could end up stinking. He's a Philly goalie after all. <laughs> Martin Jones was horrific in the playoffs last year, and San Jose's been terrible to start this season. And Darcy Kemper, same thing. Arizona, you don't know what you're going to get from them. Plus, he could end up being backup to Auntie Ranta. So I think his goalies are a big question mark. He's also got Bufflin, who he may lose. Malkin's out for at least a month, a couple of drops there. Honestly, I might even drop him a spot lower. I've already penciled him in, so we're going <laughs> to put that in ink. We're going to leave it as is because he does have a lot of guys I like. March or so, Blake Coleman, like I mentioned. He's got Hoffman, Sagan, Bergeron. His forwards are spectacular. Couturier. I love Couturier. hate the Flyers. Couturier yep. is awesome, though. Nugent Hopkins gets points. So he's got a lot of guys, and they have good peripherals as well. So I think that keeps him up at four in spite of the goalie woes. I think then next... Boozing. He's really just crept up this list. It's one of those things that we talk about in this league. Per league now a few years. Really struggled for the first couple of years. Got fun of, made fun of a lot. But his <laughs> team is very good now. Very, very good. Yep. He made the playoffs final last year. And I think he could be in for, a, a, at the very least, a top half finish in the league. Because his team is spectacular. 
I mean, when like your one of your worst forwards is William Nylander, Rupe Hints, the likes of that. Like if I'm looking at his starting lineup that he has yeah. in right now, Nylander, Johansson, Pedersen, Drysidel, LeBanc, Hints, Besser, Rantanen, Voracek, Marner, Kadri. I mean, this lineup's disgusting. Darlene, he's got Aho and Pasternak on the bench. His four, his offense is unbelievable. He should win six categories every week yep. when I look at that. Now, I also look at it and say, eh, I don't see a lot of hits there. A lot, not a lot of hits and blocks. Um, but that said, that's probably four or five categories he should win every week. Um, goalies, though. Markstrom, Schneider, Howard, Reimer. Vancouver could be good this year. Markstrom could be solid. New Jersey, same thing. Could be good this year. Schneider might be all right. Jimmy Howard. Detroit's looked decent so far this year, and I always have liked him as a goalie. His goalies may be okay. They may not. Yep. So good that even if his goalies just win a couple categories once in a while, yep. his forwards are going to be so good that he's going to have such a great roster anyways. Now, this is a tough part. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to want to put you know, yourself either second or first when you look at some of these rosters. Um, but when I look at these two teams, there's a couple of things that make me say chance of flurries at one and bend it like Backstrom at two. Number one being, and I, this may be tainted by recency bias, my goalies are sick. They are. They have not, Gibson and Flurry were unreal. Flurry until yesterday and Gibson each one goal per game. Bennington's been fantastic. I think all three of them are on good teams. Anaheim's looked good this year. Vegas, we know, is good. St. Louis, very good. I think they'll all put together pretty stellar staff. Plus, Bennington, with the way St. Louis plays D, a lot of shutouts. Same with Vegas. Flurry's been inconsistent, but he seems to get a good number of shutouts every year. I think that could help in those categories, and I think they'll all have a lot of wins. So I think that helps me there. Troy, for yourself, you got two fantastic goalies in Vasilevsky and Anderson, but Riddich with Calgary... Calgary's an offensive juggernaut, mm-hmm. but they are run and gun. Might give up a lot of goals. And Blackwood, I like him a lot. Actually, I wanted to pick him potentially, but he's a backup. Yep. You know, we'll see what happens to him. Now, same thing. Your team, I mean, we're splitting hairs when we go between these two teams. If we talk about players that are unbelievable in these teams, you got Kucherov. You got Ovechkin. Okay, your D are great with Burns. Subban's very good. Um, of course, you got Barkov, who's unbelievable. Then you have some question marks, though. Kopitar in L.A., he had a very down year last year. Um, you got the likes of Tanev, Vetrano. They're all guys that are in that second, third line tier, and we'll see if they pan out. Oh, I, I don't want to not mention Drew. He's a very good player, of course. So you have a lot of guys, if they have big seasons, could make your team great. You got Backstrom and Ben and Latang on the bench, of course. Also very, very good players uh, that are going to do great things for you. Um, but the depth guys... Are big question marks. And I think that's where it's really going to come down to between these two teams. It's just whose depth guys can go over the top. And I like my picks. I think same thing, recency bias is playing into that. But I think the fact that, you know, I have Olison on Buffalo's first line. Andre, Ka- how's it, Kasha? Kasha. Kasha, what kind of made up? Just say Case. It's spelled <laughs> like Case. He's been playing on Anaheim's first line. Jesper Bratz been playing on New Jersey's first and second line. Andreas Janssen's playing with uh, Matthews Mm -hmm. on uh, Toronto's second line. I think those depth guys are going to be very, very good. Um, You know, some big question marks. I picked a lot of big, you know, I basically went for skill on the forward side. And then other than, like, I have some skill guys defensively. I have Carlson, of course, who's fantastic. Uh, Jake Gardner, who I think is going to look very good in Carolina. Ekholm in Nashville gets points. Uh... Ek- Ekman Larson, of course, for Arizona. He's their best defense. Budis, Muzzin, uh, Pareko, guys like that that can create a little bit of contact. But I think, you know, when you look at the lineups at the teams at the top, it's very easy to put together a lineup that you said that would win the Stanley Cup yeah. year in and year out. Yep. You look at, I mean, we, we, I read through your team, basically, they're all sick. Crosby, Shifley, Hurdle, Goodrow, Blake Wheeler, Olofsson, Landeskog, Svechnikov's got like seven points already this year. Uh, Dodonov, Shen, Tarasenko. I mean, you, you can go through these rosters. I think you can do it with pretty much every team, yep. but especially the couple we've listed here at the top. You know, I'm sure the comments are going to say, oh, Troy, Matt, a bunch of Jagoffs putting their <laughs> own teams at the top. But, you know, we like to, to consider ourselves people that put a lot of work into this. You can see we're the ones making this episode. So, I mean, we're clearly putting some effort in here, uh, and I like the way our teams shake out. I, I would love to see a chance of flurries, bend it like Backstrom finals matchup. That'd be fun. It's never happened. 
Uh, I've only made it to the finals. Of course, the first year I seem to get upset every year. That the second year was it that I lost on the Pavelski empty netter oh, yeah, in the, the final minute, <laughs> and then you lost same same thing in a terrible way that week uh, that kept us both out of the championship. That was just devastating. Um, but I think everybody's team from one to ten in theory could be a playoff team, and could you know if you get into the playoffs, it's three weeks. You could make a run at the yep. title, no yep. question about it. So. I think those are the teams as they shake out top 10 the way we look at it. And, you know, I think those have been kind of validated with the first week here. Chance of Flurry's up 7 2 on Teach Me How to Dougie. Bend It Like Baxham up 6 3 on Walk with Elias. This is at the time of recording. By the time I get this <laughs> edited, it could be a month from now. Who knows? Uh, Boozing with Bosma's up on Malkin's Mouthful. Eichel Tower's up on Geyser Geese 6 2. Uh, and McDavid versus Goliath. 8-1 to one over Mix and Nash it right now. Wow. So I think that's an interesting predicament there and where we mentioned JP has a good solid team that if they overachieve could be solved. So, you know, let us know what you think. I'm sure you guys all think you have the best team in the league. Um, but, you know, it's just something we thought would be fun. I'll probably try and do these a little bit more often. Maybe, you know, every week something exciting is not going to happen, but maybe every month I'll try and put together, you know, who have been the best players teams that are surprising just an overall look around the league uh it'll probably be something similar to this maybe use a whiteboard whatever because you know the old videos i made a lot of graphics they take a long time to put together <laughs> and so it was a hindrance getting the episodes out so we'll see how it goes i hope you guys have enjoyed troy thank you so much for yeah. joining me Thanks on this episode i'm sure we'll have you back again um Anytime. it's been a lot of fun and uh, as always i hope the rest of your team suck and uh we'll see you on the next episode take care this is a sickle slap shot signing off Bye-bye. Cool. All right. Good stuff. That was good. Good stuff.